Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whatever day it is for you, whatever time it is for you, whatever point on the planet you're at, it's all good. Today is January 5th, 2023, almost a week into the new year, and we're on to the next major principle of composition. Maybe it's good at this time to look at all the major principles of composition and to kind of review on how far we've gotten. So the major principles that we'll be covering are, is dividing space or space division, emphasis, balance, and unity. And today we're on balance, which is going to be a bit short. <clears throat> Not much in balance here to talk about. And then Starting tomorrow or the next stream, I may take a break from the stream for a day or two. We're going to talk about unity after that. But today's all about balance. It's going to be a fun day. It's an interesting principle of composition balance because it's all based on what uh, you want to do. Because balance and in, a balanced composition and an imbalanced composition... Uh, Depends on what story you want to tell. <clears throat> Good morning, Thinker. Hopefully you're having a wonderful morning so far. Hopefully the music isn't too loud. Let me know if it is. Last stream, the music didn't even show up. I was playing music and I could hear it. I could hear it now. It's pretty loud for me, but I'm not sure if it's loud for you guys. Still trying to dial that in. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> when we think of balance, we think of things that are equal, but there are a lot of different ways to balance an image. You know, you look at the yin yang symbol and it's very equal in sides. We have the white with a little bit of black in it and the black with a little bit of white in it. There's a lot of symbolism there. We were talking about symbols before, remember that? Here's a symbol. It's a, it's a really cool symbol. Music's just about right. Thanks, Thinker, I appreciate it. So there's many different ways to balance things. So the first image here, we have, you know, an item that is balanced perfectly in the center. So center. And we'll go through each one of these in images. Looks like cedar. <laughs> S-E-N-T-E-R. I'm writing with the wrong brush. See, I need this one. So, dividing the focal point in half, basically. Dividing the entire image in half. And so we have... Uh, actually, I got everything set up this morning. So this is going to go a lot faster, which is going to be fun. It might be a short stream thinker. <laughs> I said it again. <laughs> It depends on what questions you ask. <laughs> I could go way off topic. So the focal point is divided in half with this one, as we can see here. And these are some really uh, great images. All three of these are coming from ArtStation. I could have written the artist down here, but I did not, so we'll deal with them. So I really like this image. Uh, this artist here is dealing with a lot of um, cinematic scenes. And you can see that the focal point is dividing the entire picture plane right in half. We'll take, let's get some layers here. There we go, right in half. Actually, let's do it with this brush. Bam. Good morning, Matthew, thanks for joining listening along as you set off to work. Wonderful. I haven't read your email yet, but I will get to it today. I promise you. Happy 30th birthday, by the way. And then this next one's really nice because we're dealing with multiple things here. I will reference this image. Uh, we're dealing with framing, which we talked about yesterday. We're dealing with dividing the composition in half with balance because the focal point is in the center 
But then there's also the equal weight balance. And we'll see that right up here. Might as well jump into that as well. So equal on each side. So you have the fulcrum in the center of your lever or the, what do you call it? The seesaw horse that kids get on and you got an equal weighted child on either side and you have balance within that. And that's what this picture is doing here. We have a dark area on the left that's just about equal balance as the dark area on the right. That creates a focal point that divides the whole picture plane in half. Um, yeah, so it's, it hits both of them. And then we have this really wonderful image here. It's a very subdued image. Again, the focal point dividing the image in half. I would say this is, this could be part of the imbalanced area as well. But when we're talking about weight, we'll reference what I talked about yesterday as well, when we were looking at, what part were we looking at? Yeah, we were looking at value and silhouette, I believe, and what drives our attention most as humans. And if you remember, what drives our attention most is, I think, four or five things. Number one was human faces. Well, let's just, yeah, let's put human faces because there's all kinds of different faces. And then animals. And then number three was man-made structures. And then number four was organic shapes. And what you'll see more most often here that the weight, the balance of the players, the actors in your composition, the weight of a human body or a human face will be much greater than anything else on your canvas, anything else in your picture. So you can use that to your advantage and we'll look a bit more into that when we get into the imbalance side of things. So why would you use this kind of center balance within your image? Why would you do that? Uh, do you want to divide your picture plane in half? That'd be the very first one. Does your story that you're trying to tell work in that way? Dividing it right in half. Also, it, there's a sense of focus here, centralized focus. It works really well for portraiture you know, everything's right in the center for portraiture. It works really well for a hero shot. So if you're doing like a hero shot, you put the hero right in the center, everything, everybody, everyone is looking at them in the center. So what point in your story are you trying to tell? Think about movies with this as well. What parts of movies do you see the main protagonist in the center? And at what point point in that movie, what are they trying to tell? Reminds me of one of the latest movies that we watched last year, which was fantastic, which was the latest Spider-Man movie. And at one point, the hero and uh, his girlfriend were being kind of accosted by the entire class at their high school and they were kind of being ushered down this row with students on either side and photographers and everything. And they divided the picture plane in half with that, with that image, with that scene. And it was kind of claustrophobic, right? There was a lot going on and they were at the center of it. It's a really good story element. So using that for, um, for whatever kind of story you're trying to tell in that aspect. And framing here, the center one is, is doing a lot of framing. There's a lot of overlap in many of these major principles of composition. Let's look at the next one on balance is equal on each side. 
And the one thing I will say here is that there's some compositions that use this that are going to be boring. There's going to be some boring compositions that happen when you have these kind of equality on either side, this perfect balance. And then there's some that will not be boring because it really depends on the interest of the subject. So I, I picked out this really old painting. I, sorry, I did not look at the name of it when I did a search for it online. But it looks like it's, you know, pre-contemporary oil painting. Um, very uh, religious, lots of religious iconography. But the artist here, you can see that they made sure that whatever they put on the right side, that they put on the left side. It's a perfect balance on either side. And it's fairly boring. But do they care that it was boring? No, it's it's here to tell a story, to tell, to get across this point. So they divided, they even divided the whole thing in half with a center of interest here. But because there's this actual similar weight on either side, there's no action. There's not a lot of movement. It's pretty flat, very stationary. If I looked at this image and if we were right there, let's say if this was a movie, this wouldn't be an action scene. This would be kind of a relax, relaxing scene, relaxing scene, <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> so it's our kind of movies every day, right? Relaxing. So equal weight on both sides. Uh, this other image is kind of interesting. It's very similar to the one above it, where the center of interest is, you know, dividing the picture plane, which is not even an inexistent here. It's more a um, conversation within a landscape. Look how beautiful the conversation or the landscape is, and the light that comes through the center from the sun. Um, that illuminates this beautiful waterfall and little pond here. This works to tell this story because it's a fairly calm moment, right? So I would call this one, let me back up, so calm, right there. A different word for boring. So instead of boring, we could say quiet, relaxing. So if you're doing an image, maybe um, you, you want an image that's similar to Thomas Kincaid, you know, who sold a millions and millions of dollars with the prints and things like that. Um, very calm, quiet, relaxing imagery that people could just live with. And this kind of composition would work well because it keeps things calm and interesting. Well, not very interesting, but just calm. Now I have two other images on the, the right hand side and I pulled this other one out here. In I liked it because it does have a division, but the division is at an angle. So our picture plane is divided this way, you know, kind of uh, top right to bottom left and that kind of angle. As I look at this image, I know right away it's, it's AI generated. Once you've generated a few AI images, which I've generated a bunch of them um, for um, inspiration. There's some things that happen, like the, the double landscape that happens. Um, I realized like, oh, this is a AI generated image. Not where I, not sure where I got it from, but pretty interesting. Uh, and something that you can pull from to make real art, right? Art made by a human would be even better, but I like the division as far as balance is concerned. It's a very interesting balance because we have a figure at the bottom right and this bright sun at the top left. Really reminds me of yin yang, what we were just looking at before. So this definite balance. But because there's 
an angular division, it's, a, it's less calm. I wouldn't say that this is super action packed, but because that it's in this angle, there's more movement. There's more going on. There's more happening. Maybe you're expecting, you know, what's going to happen after this could be a bit uh, action packed. And in this last image down here, which is pretty small, so I'm going to zoom in. We have a very interesting textural composition that's divided in half. So dark on this side and then dark on this side as well. So a very clear division, but because the artist chose all of this different texture throughout and all these different angles, there is this wonderful kind of swirl that's happening through the center. And you can create that kind of interest within it. Think about uh, looking down the, the mouth of a black hole, right? You probably wouldn't think that that is a very calm place to be, but the darkness on either side of that black hole would have a division and you would be looking directly at the center. That would also be part of the dividing the picture plane in half, the center focal point. So a lot of connections with these, with these different images. And what does it all depend upon? I'm going to say it again and again. Story. Let's write that down. So what story are you trying to tell? We have to know that first before we take on any of these um, principles of composition. What story do you want to tell? Now let's move on to probably what you see most composed within imagery is imbalance. So it's an imbalance balanced. So there's a balance of imbalance. Wow, I could say that a million different ways and it would still be weird. So you, you have objects that are of different size. So different size. Yet balanced. So you could say objects are actors within your story. Oh, and there's one kind of different um, composition that I'll talk about here that is not the greatest composition. And you'll see this a lot, like um, a lot of very simple Instagram posts, what you'll see. Let me, let me move back to here and then I'll, I'll make, let's make even a square because Instagram is square, right? So we have this square image and then you'll see an artist do their piece right in the center. And maybe it's absolutely beautiful. Maybe it's fantastic. But the composition itself, where you have this very center thing, is, is fairly boring. We looked at a lot of Norman Rockwell, who has this framed, you know, all the things are fairly framed. And he's telling his story. Composition? pretty boring in a lot of ways. If you just look at uh, the overall look of it, but he actually builds in a lot of things to some of those compositions. It makes it really interesting. And that's what we'll look at with Bouguereau here. If you, um, maybe you know Bouguereau, uh, uh, Alfred James Bouguereau or something like that. I can't remember his first name, but usually people just say Bouguereau. Very detailed, highly rendered, um, renaissance-esque paintings of you know kind of pastoral scenes also kind of like fairy kind of things i think this is a satyr with some women around it kind of thing 
So the composition is fairly boring. We have this circular composition in the center, just in the center. There, there we are. That's the overall composition. But what, you know, like um, Norman Rockwell, what Bouguereau has done is made the center really interesting. Not just with the human bodies itself, because that's, you know, always going to be really interesting to us, but there's a lot going on here. We got these limbs kind of flying everywhere. We have all of these kind of flowing lines. It's really interesting. I mean, you could just outline every limb in this. And you get a lot of action going on within there. So the I guess I guess the point here is that you could have a boring overall composition, but as long as your center of interest, your focal point is dynamic and has the interest, it could, it could carry the whole painting, right? So the focal point would need to be dynamic, okay? Maybe he knew that he wanted to do this, this configuration of figures, and he's like, well, I don't need anything else. I mean, this is fine. This is totally cool. Let's move on to some other images that talk about the object size imbalance, but the image itself is still balanced. And there's interest throughout all of these images. This top one here, I like the best. Let me zoom in. And I kept these smaller so I could show a lot of the images on the page. And we're focusing mainly on the composition, not the details anyway. So we don't need to see all the specific details of these. But there's this huge weight on the right hand side of this image, like this whole thing is one big weight, but then it is all balanced by one human figure there. And that's all we needed. Because again, what gets our attention most human faces and bodies, animals, man-made structures, organic shapes. And through the other compositional ideas that we've taken on, we can see uh, some space division involved here. Uh, one thing that we looked at yesterday with um, Fitz Thallow, which a, a person brought up, had a wonderful composition where the boat broke the horizon excuse me, where the boat that we were looking at actually went over the top of the horizon. So you had this let me see, amazing horizon line right here, and then you have an object going over the top of it. It's kind of like a crosshair. So not only is there a figure here to help with, you know, to balance out this huge weight on the side, but they're actually crossing across that uh, horizon line you've been giving that crosshair to look at. And the movement, the movement as well. We look at the movement throughout this image and we're framing this figure a bit as well. So everything is kind of coming together to balance this image. Now the black and white one below it is really interesting as well. And this is uh, probably one of the, you know, a, a perfect example is because on the right hand side uh, is the are these huge boulders right and then we have just one figure on a horse you can barely tell that it's a figure on a horse it looks like a little dot but we know that's a person we got the the leading lines of the tracks in the snow uh, and there's a balance there because our attention is right here and it helps balance everything out Honestly, I, I feel that if I went into this image and I even took out this one boulder, this one dark shape, and the artist would yell and scream, no. Don't mess with my artwork. It's perfect the way it is. 
So let me fade this out. I'm trying to make it disappear. We got this nice flow of lines that I'm 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 seeing now as I'm doing this. That point directly at the figure. Even if I take that center element out, there's still a balance there. If I zoom out a bit, because that one horse really helped it out. Actually, I feel like I, I'm looking at that figure, that little figure even more with that change. Let's see. Very subjective. I actually like it without the center, <laughs> without the center thing in there. So that'll be a, a subjective idea, but I like it without the big center block. But look at the weight there. We got this huge thing on the right, but this little tiny thing on the left, but because it's there, because it's actually silhouetted in its own self, it's darker with light. We got all these elements pointing to it, these leading lines. Let me outline those leading lines. Look at that. That helps it out. That creates that balance. At the right here, we have this really colorful and <clears throat> imbalanced image. Well, not imbalanced due to... Imbalanced due to size of items, just like we were talking about. But it's actually cut in half as well. I mean, if we cut it here, it's almost, you know, the end of this tree stops there. We have a person in a tree and they, those might as well meld into one big shape. You know, this shape here and this person is just kind of within there. There's some interesting balance within texture. We have that tree shape, but then down here we have the antithesis of that. It's almost like a reflection, but the reflection's done in how the artist has manipulated this trail or this road. But I feel like that there's a, you know, a harmony within that. Yet, some action going on. I think there's a bit too much that's added in here that's distracting from, you know, whatever story that they're telling. But I like this because how the texture brought the simplicity. Or brought some dy dynamics into the sim simplicity of this composition. It would be interesting to take this composition and to just do a black and white of it, maybe a three color study of it, and see how it works without all of this texture. I really like the image here. This is. It looks like flying humpback whales with more flippers than they normally have. So a different world image, but we have this really kind of crazy imbalance yet movement that's going on here of, you know, object size. But what's, what's really interesting is how the artist has set apart the main figure by silhouetting that figure with some light background. So we could divide this whale here into one big shape and all this into one large shape. There's a sense of balance to it. We, there could be some subjectivity here. We could argue about if this is balanced or not and play with the composition to, to balance it out more. I like that the artist included this like whale in the distance. Maybe that there is this knowledge that this larger whale in the foreground, it was hard to tell exactly what it is. So this is your example, right? I also like the movement, you know, the movement goes straight out to the right. One of my most favorite artists on the planet is Andrew Wyeth. Oops. I think I have, I don't know how many books of his. 
I went to a retrospective show of his in Seattle, the Seattle Art Museum, a few years ago. I went to it, I think I went to it twice. I took a bunch of artists there. We went on a road trip and looked at Andrew Wyeth all day. It was great. Had all these wonderful paintings while I was in there for hours. Took a bunch of pictures, bought the retrospective book. Master of composition. He was um, taught by his father in a lot of ways and other people. N.C. Wyeth and then N.C. Wyeth was taught by Howard Pyle and I forget the like the, the brandy wine painters or something like that. That sounds like Lord of the Rings, honestly. Brandy wine? I could I have had that wrong, but um, but a large illustrative history there. And if you want to really see these compositional elements used to the maximum, um, illustration. Once again, I'll refer you to svslearn.com. svslearn.com. School of Visual Storytelling.com or svslearn.com. Uh, creative Composition with Will Terry. Does a lot of compositional stuff. Uh, this is where I get a lot of this information from, honestly. And it's absolutely wonderful. But why am I showing... Andrew Wyeth here. Well, there's a difference in size for these images. If if I outlined Christina here, this this is uh, this painting is called Christina's World, and we get an insight into her world. If I outline her, and I take this and I put it up here, I mean we can see it's bigger than both of these houses combined. It's this huge kind of shape, which makes sense because, well, I mean, they're in the distance and she's in the foreground, so they're gonna be bigger. But she's also wearing a pink dress with high contrast against um, this very textural background of grass and hay. But yet that there's this kind of perfect balance. There's also a leading line. We're not, we don't see her face, but we can tell that she's looking off towards the mountain or towards the, the house that she's trying to get to. And there's a, an idea of movement here. There's definite idea of movement. Honestly, there could be 12 houses up top here or a big, huge thing. And because she is silhouetted by all this grass, because she is human, because she's a person, uh, there's a ton of weight here. Maybe there is some imbalance here because there's so much weight on her as a person. So the story with Christina, Christina's world is um, Andrew Wyeth lived next to Christina and her brother who lived together. And she was um, paraplegic, I believe, had had some health issues, basically. I'm not sure what. So you can see that she's very thin. She doesn't have the use of her legs. And he wanted to describe her world, you know, what she needed to do to get around to function. Um, beautiful composition, beautiful story. Fantastic. Check out Andrew Wyeth. Start collecting Andrew Wyeth imagery. If you love him, right? Collect what you love. Uh, that's always going to be one of the pieces of homework here is to look at artist imagery. Like all the time. Always look at images because it's where your motivation can come from. It's where you learn from. It's where you can look at compositions and where you can start going through this course and really bring in your own images and say, huh, I'm going to see if I can find the balance. What is the type of balance in this image I love? Is it center balance? Is it equal on each side? Or does it have an imbalance of actors um, 
that brings a balance to the whole thing. So collect images. We'll look at Andrew Wyeth again here. This is uh, another part of balance that I want to talk about. And it's having the character facing the larger space. Creating space for the character to move in. This is by Andrew Wyeth. It's called Intruder. And here we have our main character that's over on the right hand side. Maybe even close to a third, I would say. Not quite, a little bit off of a third. But Andrew Wyeth has given this space for the, the dog to move into. The main character has this space to look into. You know, what are they looking off into? We need space there. There's also implied lines that point directly to this area. There's that high contrast. I mean, all of our center of interest is there. Framing is happening. Don't just use one piece of this con of all of these principles of composition. Pack in as much as you can to tell your story the best. Keep your audience's eyes where you want them. You, you're the director here for the images that you create. This is a drawing by, oh geez, I can't remember the person's name. It's not Edward Hopper. Homer, I believe. It's an image by Homer, uh, an etching. And you can see that this uh, seaman is looking off into the distance and there's space here for them to create that distance. What are they looking off into? If, I had the, if they had divided the image here, right? It would be kind of awkward. Again, we talk about cropping here. Don't divide, don't crop the image down so you don't give the main protagonist space to move into. Here we have another puppy, another dog that's looking off into the distance. Oh, it's a very sad puppy, very forlorn. This is, I believe this is NCYF, looks like. Maybe uh, someone similar from that time period. Again, we have that distance for them to look off into, for them to move into, for their thoughts to move into, for the ideas to move into. Because it's a lot about what is unsaid here that gives room for the viewer. It gives room for the viewer to think about their own things, to introduce their own ideas into your painting. Don't, you don't have to spell out everything perfectly within your compositions. Uh, give us some room to, to think. So we give them space to move into. So here's an example of one that's not balanced at all. I've made this kind of superhero guy really quickly. <laughs> you know, maybe we should put a red cape on them. So here's this superhero person, right? And they're off to save the day, but then they're boom, they're, they're just like hit right into the wall, right? I'm off to save the day, smash into the wall of the side of your, your canvas. Now let's not do that. So you put them on the right so that they have some place to fly and take off. You'll see this in movies all the time. Heck, the entirety of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, if you watch that movie, when they start off from the Shire, go through Rivendell to, uh, oh man, Lothlorien, all the way to Rohan, into, you know, every place that they go to. I can't name them all. <laughs> all of the Lord of the Rings fans out there are going, come on, gotta name them all. But the entire that movie, entirety of that movie, they're all moving to the right. So L O T R. Not the entirety of the movie, actually. Like the whole movie, they're walking to the right, left to right, until the end of the third movie. So they got to their destination. They did what they came to do. And then at the very end, you see them moving from right to left. They're going back. 
It's really interesting. And they did that intentionally because they gave space for their main characters to move into in a consistent space, always left to right. We're moving to this thing. You'll see it in movies a lot, you know, how, which way the characters move through a certain scene. Like if you have a car chase or a foot chase, it'll start out from like left to right and it'll continue left to right or right to left. It will continue that way for the whole chase. Because if they started doing in like different directions, it would really confuse the audience. Definitely. Okay, that's balance. Then we'll look at homework real quick. Center balance, equal on each side, imbalance, just complete balance, very equal. What story do you want to tell? Do you want to tell a story of heroic, um, empathy, an attention in the center, everything's about this person in the center. Do you want a calm scene? Do you want to calm things out? Do you want it to be a calm composition, but a dynamic um, focal point? Do you want to have a boring composition because your focal point has so much dynamics inside of it that it works well? Do you want to imbalance it with uh, different size elements? but bring that balance back by utilizing different figures that gain attention greater. But always make sure that you leave space for your viewer and your protagonist to move into. And so the homework here is to go through your collection of images or continue to collect images and find images that have balance find images that have balance and then answer the question how are they balanced and i would say you know find images that you enjoy first maybe not even worry about if they have a balanced composition i know you're thinking of some artists right now that you're like oh man i love that artist it's so they're so good well we have the internet to our advantage here. Bring some images down and then answer the question. Is this balanced? Well, then how is it balanced? And then through that, you'll find images that are not balanced and then answer the question. Well, how is this not balanced? Yeah. And that's what you're going to be doing. It's very simple. I mean, you get to look at art and get comp and get motivated by fantastic other artists easy easy create that uh, bank of images I'm gonna take a pause there drink some tea and see if you guys have any questions <laughs> yeah uh, wow, you did make it short. Yep, it's short today. How, how much time are we into this? Half an hour. Wow, did I, did I keep it in a half an hour? Oh, 45 minutes. <laughs> not, as, not as quite as short as I would like, but no, this is good. I'm right at 4.30 my time. So, it's good. You know, the reason why I'm keeping this short right now, and that's another thing I should mention, is... I'll probably not have a live stream. Actually, I'm not going to say probably. I'm going to I'm going to make it definite here. I'm not going to do a live stream uh, for the next three days. I'll be back on Monday. And the reason why is I'm doing tutorials on. Oh, I'm doing some awesome tutorials. And actually, because you guys are always show up, especially you thinker always here. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. No one else has seen these except for very close friends and family. So you guys are like family. <laughs> well, not really. I have no idea who you are. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Uh, so where am I at? Uh, I'm, I'm really organized with these. And Okay, we'll look at the eye tutorial that I have going on. 
and I have to find my latest recording of it. Oh, not there. That's a nose tutorial that I'm doing. Here we go. Now this is going to be sideways. I haven't, I haven't processed the image yet. I haven't processed the uh, video. So you're going to look at a sideways image. But this is a tutorial on painting the eye in three different orientations. Front view, three quarter view, side view. And I don't know, I have several hours of recording this and I'll, I'll probably, I'll cut it up and I'll do a smaller portion of this on YouTube. Uh, just an overview, how to see the whole thing. And then you'll see on my gum road, I'll probably sell the, uh, the full tutorial for, you know how I like to do it pretty darn cheap. So anybody could buy it, no problem. So I got <clears throat> an eye tutorial that I'm working on. And then I finished the first layer for a nose tutorial next. There we go. So that's the end of the first layer. <clears throat> front view, side view, or front view, three quarter view and profile view for the nose. And <clears throat> these are using like a Canon log. So there's a very subdued tone to them. I haven't done any coloration for this. So you're seeing like the raw footage. This is very raw footage on that. And then yesterday I started a tutorial on the mouth. Just drawing it out. There I am drawing. Front view, three quarter view, profile view. So the eyes are not done on Krita. The eyes were put together within Krita from um, images. So let me see. I'll go into my projects folder. Video eye tutorial. And I collected a bunch of eyes. And I'm actually going to start with Krita. Because I'm going to be talking about how to pick good reference and where to get good reference imagery because we're going to be studying the structure of an eye um, on the body we're going to be structuring you know studying the um, how the eye functions but how to put these images together on krita you know bring them together how to create a grid line over them which is part of the process but as far as like Painting the eye in Krita? No, didn't do that on this one. And then I have an even larger tutorial that's coming up that I want to work on and get that um, finalized. And that's why I'm going to be spending more time on it this weekend. But yeah, I got a lot of great things coming out for you guys uh, to, to be on YouTube, to go on my gum road as far as tutorials and yeah, just to help you become a better artist, give you some practical step-by-step -step methods of creating wonderful oil paintings. And yeah, it's a good question there, Thinker. Now I'm thinking about how can I start this in Krita a bit more first, you know. I do lean heavily on digital, especially for testing the drawing. It's a perfect place for looking at, let's say you do a drawing on your canvas. I go through the whole process of taking the image um, and I actually use uh, Lightroom and Photoshop to do this, to straighten out the image and then to bring it back into Krita so that you can um, look at your drawing and get a objective approach to if your drawing is correct or not which has been fantastic for me to learn how to draw uh, much more accurately. Because too often we draw something and it, we're like, man, is that right? I can't tell. And it's hard to get a really objective idea of that. So I use a lot of overlays to help us get a very objective approach to if our drawing is getting better or not. So I'll be back in the, in the stream on Monday. Let me see, back on Monday 
and that is what day is that that's the ninth So you guys will have a little bit of break from me. <laughs> but I'll be working my butt off on other things. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. That's the it. The end. Yeah, I know. I'm getting, I'm getting closer to an hour. I'm 50 minutes in now. Okay, we're going to end it there. Thank you guys for showing up. Thanks God, for being here. Check out my Gumroad. It's linked into the description of this live stream. Um... If you want all the materials, all the resources from this continually growing live stream, it's over there. It's $10, but if you're in this live stream right now, you can get $5 off on it. That's CB50 off, and you'll get five bucks off. And that's only $5 for a growing collection of everything that I'm showing here. And I'm gonna be updating it today. I got three uh, episodes to update on that with a lot of resources. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here, and I will see you on Monday. <laughs>